So after my uh, my knockout loss to Abel Trujillo back in uh, UFC 169, um, I took that fight on short notice, and I got a few bonuses, and it was really uh, it was the bonuses bonuses were nice, but having that blemish on my record, especially after beating the brakes off the guy for as long as I was beating him, um, and then to go down the way I went down was was a tough pill pill to swallow. But I got some phone calls after that fight from Dana White. He left me two voicemails and kept calling me until he got a hold of me. I was, I was really upset. I didn't know who was calling me, so I actually just kept ignoring all the calls that I was getting. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I could take some humility, and uh, it, it was just it was a tough situation. But um, after that fight, I finally talked to Dana, and they, they thanked me for saving the event because it, uh, it was a really boring night of fights, and I went out there and laid it on the line. And, uh, so with that being said, I, I got an opportunity to pretty much pick my next fight, venue, everything. They're like, you know, whatever you whatever you want, take some time off, let your head heal, and when you're ready, give Joe a call, and uh, we'll get you on the main card, and we'll, we'll take care of you. And so I called Joe probably three days later. I'm like, hey, I want to get back in there right away. Um, you know, I have a 90-day suspension, so it looks like I, could, I would be able to fight by May, maybe I can get on that May Vegas card, and he's like, sure, what, I mean, what are you thinking as far as opponents go, and I'm like, I really like to fight like a Sam Stout, a Mac Danzig, someone tough that's been around a while, and he's like, well, what about James Krause? I'm like, that's, now that's a good fight, and he's coming off a tough loss as well, I think he got TKO'd by Bobby Green, and I got knocked out by Abel, so it, the fight makes sense. So, uh, with that being said, I we, we made that fight happen, and uh, here I am, and I'm really looking forward to it. Since I opened Impact MMA in Scottsdale, it doesn't really make much sense for me to be training at these other gyms while trying to sell and promote myself in my gym, you know, to try and show people that what we're teaching here really works. So with that being said, I, I hired a whole new coaching staff. I have a world champion jiu-jitsu instructor, Augusto Tequino Mendez. I have a world champion boxing coach, Kelly Davis. He's a three-time world champion. And my kickboxing coaches are the uh, is Nick Chastain, who fights for Lion Fight. I mean, these these are great coaches. And as far as my training partners go, I brought some of the same guys over, but I have a lot of new guys. Uh, Tim Welch has been my main training partner for this fight, as well as uh, uh, Nick and Damian Chastain, uh, as far as all the kickboxing goes. And then grappling, I, I grapple with uh, Sunquino and and Tim Welch, and wrestling wrestle with uh, Eric Larkin. So it's been. It's been, a, it's been a great camp. I'm real excited to see how the combination of everybody really works out. And there's really no way to tell just in sparring, because I'm used to my sparring partners, but th this fight is an opportunity for me to see how it works, you know, and see what adjustments need to be made. But when you have conditioning and strength and you know you've done everything right, that's a weapon. You know, just even mentally, just knowing that you got the gas tank to go 15 minutes, and if the fight needs to go 20 or 25, you can do it. Uh, there hasn't been a fight in over a year where I've been confident that I can go 15 minutes. I know I can grind out 15 minutes, I can make it through, I can survive, but to be able to push the pace and fight at the, the pace that I like to fight, this is going to be the first fight that I've been able to do that, that I will be able to do that. I, I played out this fight so many different ways and it's, uh, it's crazy because every time I see it ending differently and I'd be lying to you if I didn't see myself losing in some of those visions. Some, when, I'm, when I'm thinking about the fight, sometimes I, I get a little anxiety and I get, I get a little nervousness and I'm thinking, oh shoot, what if I lose? Um, but I would say that's probably one out of every 10 thoughts, every 10 visions I have when I visualize this fight maybe one of them is a loss. And I think that's what keeps me sharp. If I knew I was gonna win this fight, I, I probably wouldn't even want it. What would I have to prove? But I, I see this fight playing out, me going out there and having the fight of my life and using all the techniques that I've been working on this whole training camp and putting on a clinic and showing the world what I'm really capable of. Now, they, they got this distorted image of me, like I'm a, I'm a slugger, I'm a wrestler, I can do this. Uh, you know, if he hits you with a bomb, you're going to go out. But that, all that's true, but I'm a technical fighter. I've been fighting for 11 years. This is what I do. I fight. You know, I don't just, just fight in the cage. I fight in life. You know, I, I, I've had to work hard my whole life to get where I am. And 
this is just another opportunity for me to show the world and for me to inspire people. Um, in, in this career, I, I've been doing it for a long time. Like I said earlier, 11 years I've been fighting. So my yesterdays are starting to outweigh my tomorrows. And I'm not, I'm not trying to, to go out losing. I, I went out losing in wrestling. I went out losing in high school wrestling, college wrestling. I, I, I left my career boxing. I went out on a win. But I want the career that's built me, that's eventually going to support my family, which got me a gym. I want to go out on my terms. I want to go out with a win. This fight with James Krause is an opportunity for me to enjoy what I do. You know, to have preparation and destiny kind of come in and just make a laser beam and just go in there and fight my heart out, and use the techniques that I've learned in this training camp, and win. Without my family and all those people that have stuck by me and supported me all these years, there's there's no way I'd be doing what I'm doing. You know, my mother being the most selfless woman, and she introduced me to my very first training partner. My mom and dad were both uh, alcoholics and drug addicts my whole life. My mother didn't get sober until, she, until I was 17. It was August 22nd, 2002. My mother threw a telephone at my dad. My dad called the cops and the cops came and arrested my mom and they forced her to go to rehab. And uh, in that rehab, she met a guy named Ben Seaman. And Ben trained jiu-jitsu and trained with some MMA fighters. and. Him and my mom really kind of uh, hit it off in the uh, inpatient rehab. And I went in to go see my mom and I met this guy, which is really weird. I met this guy, my, my, the guy that introduced me to MMA. I met him visiting my mom in rehab. And he's like, I gave a guy my number. He gave, it, gave me his number. He's like, hey, if you really want to train, we've got some good jujitsu guys. And we have guys that fight. We can help you get ready and see, see if this is something you really want to do. And um, he gave me a call about a week later when, when he got out and I went down there and I just got tied up in knots. And it was so crazy. That's, that's how I got into the sport of MMA back in 2002. August of 2002, my mom had to go to rehab and that's how I got into the sport of MMA without my mom deciding that it was time for her to make a change and sticking to the program and going to rehab. and. Um, introduced me to Ben like this none of this would have happened so you know my, my mom my family my brothers my sisters you know I do this so I can provide a good life for them I, I mean I've already started college programs college funds for my for my two nieces and I supported my brother when he went to college my little sister lives with me now and I'm supporting her while she goes to college and, and it, it's great being able to do that for somebody and uh without my, my family, without my mom, without my grandfather, I, I never would have went to college. And I think it's not so much giving out handouts, but just being there to, to help and to inspire and to motivate and to just love is, is something that, that there's something to be said about that. So without, with all my friends and family, I wouldn't be here. And I, I love you all very much. And I thank you all very much. I need to thank Head Rush for supporting me. You know, I haven't won a fight with Head Rush yet, but yet they still bring me out to the expos and they still support me when I go and fight every single time. And uh, there's something to be said about their character, believing in me, knowing that you know I'm going to do big things and just stick by my side through the good and through the bad. So I need to really thank Head Rush, Orrin Hodak, you know, owner, founder, operator of uh, KO Reps. You know, it was just me and him on a handshake when I first started this, and uh, he stood by my side. You know, going from world champion in WEC to getting kicked out, to, to losing my job, to fighting in regional shows, losing in regional shows, to deciding that I want to make a comeback and get back into the UFC and win fight of the night a couple times. Like he's really, he's really done done right by me so Warren Kale reps you know I, I couldn't I wouldn't be here without them you know it's it's great to have somebody like that that has your back always body fortress my second my, I'm going to my second contract with body fortress and they're amazing greatest people team Cindy body fortress all the way uh, it's just amazing it's a dream come true and 
body fortress without them I, I, I just I don't know I don't know where I'd be but I don't think I'd be as successful.